In this video, we're going to be working on a Samsung laptop that came in for no power. Now, as soon as I looked at the charging port, I could tell that there's damage inside that port. I went ahead and ordered another port, and it was actually hard finding that port, but I was able to locate one. And we're going to go ahead and replace the port. Should be an easy job. Now, basically, the way to remove the port would be to use low melt solder because that would be the easiest way to do it. We can use hot air, but I do not want to expose the board to a lot of heat. So we do the job as safely as possible, and we do that by using low melt solder. Now, as you see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. We have to desolder seven pins in order to remove that connector. And we're going to do that by applying low melt solder on all seven joints. And when we apply low melt solder, what's going to happen is low melt is going to mix with unleaded. It's going to lower down the melting temperature and we should be able to remove that port without applying too much heat. So let's go ahead and start. Mama, this is so easy. And you'll get to see the magic of using low melt solder. Mama, now, I'm going to apply low melt solder using a big tip to achieve more heat transfer. If you use a smaller tip, then you're going to have a minimal heat transfer, which may not be enough to mix low melt with unleaded. The bigger the tip, the more heat transfer. And we're going to grab a stick of low melt solder. And a tiny bit of low melt solder goes a long way. You can find low melt solder on our website. They come in a tube like this, six sticks inside. And I just took a tiny piece. And we're not going to even use that whole piece. We're just going to use a tiny bit. And I'll show you. See, so I'm starting to apply low melt solder on this joint right here. Then we're going to do it right here. And of course, I have my fume extractor on because you do not want to do this job without a fume extractor. You do not want to inhale those fumes. Especially if you solder a lot, you need to invest in a good fume extractor. Your health is more important than fixing a device. And do not settle for a cheap fume extractor. Get something that works. See, all I'm doing is I'm pointing the tip onto the joint and low melt is mixing with unleaded. See, you can see how the solder is mixing. Now that we applied low melt solder on all joints, and look at that. I only used a tiny bit. So six sticks, they go a long way. And you do not need to use a lot, just a tiny bit. And the tube does last. It lasts for a lot of devices. It depends on how often you use it. You do not use low melt for everything. But in situations like this, low melt is very useful. Okay, so now that we have low melt solder applied onto that port, it will be very easy to remove that port. We can do it in two ways. I can keep my soldering iron on one of the pins and heat will transfer to the area and I will be able to remove that port or I can apply a little bit of hot air to remove that connector. We do not have to apply a lot. Maybe I'll set my hot air station at around the 300 or 350 for a few seconds and we should be able to remove that connector. Okay, maybe we can try it on this camera here. Okay, I have this board holder under it so I can have the board raised and we can pull down on the connector. So let's use hot air, just a tiny bit. The reason we use low melt solder is so we can apply as minimal heat as possible. So just expose the joints to a little bit of heat. And look at that, look at that. The connector is already moving, done. If we did not have low melt solder on those joints, it would take a good one minute maybe of 450 degrees Celsius on that area of the board to remove the connector for unleaded solder to melt and that's very bad because you can end up warping the board you can end up affecting other components on that board so we always have to work on motherboards 
as safely as possible. We apply minimal amount of heat as possible and we do that by using low melt solder. I always mention how low melt solder is magic. So now we're gonna wick those joints. And we have an awesome wick here that's gonna do the job quick. And to help with the desoldering process, we apply some flux. Flux helps with the flow of solder. You can still wick if you do not use flux, but it's gonna get messy and flux just makes it so much easier. Okay, look at that. Look at the magic of this wick. Oh yeah, we got Alexis key fob for repair. Okay, so this is clean, this is clean, clean, clean. I think we're all good. We just have some flux inside the holes. See, that's nothing but flux. And we are ready to solder our new conductor. Awesome. What I'm going to do is show you the difference between the customer's damaged port and the port, the new one that we bought. This is the customer's port. You can see, you can tell how there are two pins inside that port because there's a plastic piece that should be inside. If we compare it to the new port, that's how it should look like. And that port will fit just like that. See it? Now we're gonna solder it from the back and we should be all good. Flux, flux. We have three pins here, we're gonna flux it up. And flux. Okay, I just want to hold that port in place and then we'll switch over to the microscope and apply more solder onto the joints. Let's go over these one more time. So I just applied the blob of solder here and two blobs over there to hold that connector. We're going to finish up the job by doing this. I think the light is just too bright. Flip the board, just look at the port from the back here. Make sure that those joints are making a good connection and look at that. Look at how beautiful those solder joints are from back of the board. They are making an excellent connection. And the job is done. Better than factory. Let's clean the back. Remove any residue of flux. What's gonna happen is flux is gonna get stuck on this Kimtech wipe. And that's why I use it. Because if you do it with the brush only, the brush will only smear the flux all over the board. It's not gonna remove the flux. So the dry wipe will remove the flux and the flux will get stuck on that wipe. All done. I'm going to give this to Big Boss to reassemble and test and I'll be back to continue the video. 
All right, so Big Boss reassembled the board and he already tested the laptop and he confirmed that it's working, but I'm gonna do it on camera so we can finish the video. Turn the power bank on. And this is, this is the laptop. And look at this. Be right there. And look at this. Look at the orange charging light, which indicates that the battery is being charged. And look at this. <laughs> Job is done. Okay. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.